You did nothing wrong for receiving that lumpkin on Thanksgiving. It's time for Lucky Time Explosion! Wow. Oh, I just woke up everyone in the building. If they were sleeping, I just rocked their world with that blumpkin drop. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> what? Good morning. It's a funny <laughs> word. And if you don't know what it is, don't it's better off it you don't know. That is true. Please but don't look it, it up. use it in as many sentences as possible. Like, if you get kicked in the shin, like, ow, blumpkin. No, no. Or if you fail the test, you're just like, blumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, what's up with you, dude? Good morning. I'm I'm in a little bit of pain, as we all know. I'm an yep. old man, and my back hurts, and I need a cane, and I should be going. Oh, my name is Morgan Lap, and how you doing? Would you like to go <laughs> on a date and eat Metamucil? <laughs> does Metamucil help your back at all? It does a lot of different things. Oh man. Yeah. Well, so today is is March 11th, right? It is March 11th. Yeah. Damn. We have a, our show is closed. So we just closed a show called Four Women, uh, curated by Akeem Duncan of Quiet Lunch Magazine. Uh, but it, we still have the work here, and I think you can still get it through Akeem. Uh, we have four artists here. It was Kelly Lucas, Margaret Wilbo, uh, Destiny Mata, and Rebecca Brosnan. And congratulations, Marguerite, for your sales. Yeah, top seller. Great, beautiful mm. little paintings. Check them up. I'm also they really partial awesome. to Kelly Lucas's work. I think Kelly's is uh, pretty special. All the work here is pretty amazing. Yeah. I'm down. I'm down. If I had uh, a lot of money, I'd, hey, I'd buy it all. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're an artist listening, um, a reminder that Chishama, if you, if you know about Chishama, there's a lot Chishama. of la mamas and shishamas and lama mamas and llamas. It's not la mama. La mama gallery has the um, like we talked about last episode. That's right. Has the um, coming up uh, the Whitney Houston biannual or formerly titled Whitney Houston biannual. Now it's called the Every Woman biannual. That's, That's coming huge. up with la mama. La That's mama's huge. got a great history in the city. It does. I was looking into the background of uh, Harvey Firestein. <laughs> Just because I'm a big fan. Mm -hmm. And um, he was like when I was young and I was, you know, when I didn't know what to do. I was 16 years old and I was looking at the back of the village voice and I saw this ad. That, he's got uh, a great voice. He's yeah. got a great voice. And then next thing you know, he's like living at La Mama's. Yeah. La Mama, for those who don't know, is a performing arts center and like a, a theater center. But they also have a really wonderful gallery attached and, i did uh, not know yeah we got to go check that out i gotta more. look more into that because it, i didn't know about it much until you brought it up and then yeah. harvey firestein but it seems like it's got a really rich history of a it lot does. of uh a hotbed for a lot of talent that has uh, emerged from new york city whether they through theater or through visual arts or through music it seems like that place really uh very important yeah, it's cool, too. They have good work all the time. I think them, E.D. Siegel, uh, the artist E.D. Siegel, she's, I believe, working there in a more regular capacity. I could be wrong. It could just be the, uh, the coming pop-up. And she's not pop um, related to Steven Seagal. No. Two no, different I don't people. believe so. Siegel, Seagal. Two different people. Maybe I figured she was related and she just wanted to pronounce her last name differently to be, right. to, you know, disattach herself from Steven Seagal. But the reason, the reason I brought it up anyway was... Um, Shashama, not La Mama, but Shashama uh, is has an open call right now for a exhibition in their Midtown lobby, which I do believe is in the um, oh, it's in a big Condé Nast building. Ooh. Yeah, so I think they're in the Condé Nast building. Could I so submit? You can. Yes, it's <gasps> open. Everyone can submit until uh, March 18th. Shh, don't tell anybody. Chashama. You're going to make it more difficult for me to, <laughs> to win the prize. Yeah, but I mean, your work's good enough. It can stand on its own against everybody. Well, I do believe that. Too. Well, then, then submit. Mm. Our art is not a competition, Morgan. You know, it's not a competition. I must win. <laughs> ah! We're out here to win art. <clears throat> Yeah, speaking of winning art, actually, another thing I thought was pretty funny that I was reading in the news was um, Kenny Schachter. You know Kenny Schachter? I don't. Please explain. Okay, so Kenny Schachter's been around for a while time. He's like a critic and an artist himself. Um, he's very much on the edge of stuff like um, NFT stuff. He's been doing a lot of... NFTs are still a thing. They are, but like his stuff with it is uh, particularly funny because I feel like he's more aware of it than a lot of people, and including the bad parts. So he's kind of like making work about that. And the latest thing he's done um, is a game 
called Pop Principle. So this is just this mm. is coming out like also around March 18th, I think. Uh, and the 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 point of this game is that he's got like eight art world characters, including his friend Jerry Saltz, friend of the show. Uh, you know, Yayo Yayoi Kasama, Larry Gagosian, Paris Hilton, uh, and then kind of taking some of these more old world art figures like hey, Paris Hilton. I'm joking. Uh, and, I would have believed. I believed it 100. percent Yeah, Osanachi, Beeple, and anyway, so we've got like Hans Ulbr um, Ulrich uh, Albright on there. And the idea of this NFT game is that you... Not, not the same. You said Hans? Yeah, Hans Ulrich Obright. It has no connection to old man Hans. From Simpsons? No, no, no. Old Hans man Hans, Hans is uh, an elderly porn star. No, I don't believe there's no connection. No. no. You're saying there's, there's no multiple Hans? Connections. There's more than one Hans? Yeah, this, Hans is like the most common German name there is. There should be only... It's like the old, Bill or Steve of, of yeah, German Yeah, right. Names. That's cool. But like, they're not old man Hans. They're not all mole man Hans. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm they, 35 years old. I remember that? That's my favorite part of that. I was I like, did. I'm 35. Anyway, a great so the idea of this game is that you like mint unlimited editions of those artist work. So I'm hmm. not sure how that works. If he has like AI making up Kasama pieces or something. And then the idea is that after, you know, everyone's been minted, like there's be a winner of whoever mints the most and whichever character that he's created. And then the person who wins this contest of minting and buying non-fungible tokens uh, ends up getting a statue of the character. So you get like, and, and it's funny too, because Kenny Schofter is really doing a lot of these like pretty bad like 3D graphics, which I love. Like it's a very it's a very funny style, like dumpy. So I want to see some. the 3D. Yeah, there going. you go. Look at that. Oh, it's all weird looking. So you could win a sculpture that looks like this if you participate in Kenny's uh, NFT game. But I don't know. It, it it's pretty it's pretty silly, but it, it is interesting because it's not just like an artist doing a, a drop. It's like a whole game around the idea of pop uh, characters. So I kind of like that. That's cool. Did you play board games with your parents? Yeah, we played um, one called Sorry a lot. Oh, Sorry, of course. Remember Sorry? No. No, 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 no. Shifty. Shifty? Yeah. I don't Shifty. know no Shifty. No, Shifty was a great game. It was like, um, it had a board that had little movable pieces. So like you could, you'd roll a die, another dice and then you'd like pull away the section of path that they're walking on. Oh, so you kind of my. rearrange the game. Oh, that's interesting. As you go. And I like this. There was another one that we used to play that um, was like a parody about climbing the corporate ladder. And it was like very much like a, You play some weird board games. We really did, yeah. I don't know, I don't know what I'm it like, is. I'm like, I play Monopoly. I played <laughs> Life. You're like, I played Shifty. <laughs> yeah, I'm we, like, what? We had some really OG weird board <laughs> games. They are strange. It, it's a cool graphic, so you'll really like the box. Check it out. There's the box. Shifty. Oh, awesome. If I, you see a copy of this game at your local thrift store, pick that pick that up. That sounds really awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, I yeah, I played the traditional, you know. There was one old school one though called Booby Trap. Do you know Booby Trap? Is it like Mousetrap? No, it's well, Mousetrap is awesome. Mousetrap was awesome. There's so many pieces. There are a lot of pieces. And if you like lose any of those pieces, you're kind of like Screwed. I bet you could get Camera. like replacement places on eBay. Oh yeah, well now with 3D printers, you could probably design your own fucking. Oh my oh. god! Wait, ah! I do. I do have an art-related thing about Mousetrap actually, because uh, one year I was at Burning Man Festival and they had a. Sorry, uh, how laughing. dare you? How dare you laugh at me, sir? <laughs> I'm steampunk. No, have you ever been? You've never been. No, but I, I, when I first moved to Brooklyn, a few, two of my friends went there. Yeah, and. uh this is like 2008. And when they came back, they were not the same person. So like <laughs> really when I saw them. that, I was like, You're like I'm well, never they, going. Well, they were like zombies. For like well, they probably year. just took too many drugs. Well, yeah, that freaked me out. Yeah, you don't have to take too many drugs if you go. Yeah, but if you go, you're in the middle of a desert, so what else are you going to do? It's true. I mean, <laughs> but like, the reason I brought Burning Man up in the first place was because at one year I went, they had a life-size mouth trap. So it, they had recreated Mousetrap, the board game, but like literally huge with scaffolding and like an actual bathtub and like a bowling ball that would roll down like the marble. You just changed my mind. Yeah, that's all it took, right? I'm yeah. going to Burning Man next year, man. <laughs> We're going to do a steampunk cat trap 
mouse trap. <laughs> I also saw the, one of the other coolest things I ever did saw. They, there. Did it end with an Iron Maiden? No, no, you don't. Oh, you do a sign a waiver. You sign a death waiver. So, like, if, <laughs> if they had an Iron Maiden and you got killed by it, and there's nothing you or your family could do. I don't do. think there's no way out of an Iron Maiden. They had some really? stuff that was as dangerous as an Maybe Iron Maiden. Maybe they should have a tickling Maiden. Instead of like they spikes, they, it have. should just be feathers. And you'd be like, <laughs> but you would still die because you'd like laugh to death. They definitely have people tickling you there. There's a lot of kinky stuff. Yeah, I got to. I need to maybe rethink this whole well, learning. My, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I'm a little bit surprised that they still call it Burning Man. Well, and what's the name of it? I'm shocked that they didn't turn it to Burning Person. <laughs> That'll happen or, eventually, or probably. Burning Them. Burning they them, mm. yeah no, uh, but bur I had the same opinion of Burning Man when I first mm. was like my friend Max was trying to get me to go. Max Savage, Ch shout out to Max what by the way. What a name! Yeah, Max Savage actually okay tangent again, but it's worth it. Max Savage is an amazing producer, music producer. I worked in the movie theater for many years. His mother used to work at Adobe, and Ooh. when they were trying to come up with a name for their three D software. Um, they, somebody suggested, or like as a joke or something, just called it 3D Max. And that is because of his mom's naming her new son, Max. So the 3D Max in Adobe's old 3D Max was literally named after Max, my friend Max. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And Max is cool. He's, he's doing a lot of cool musical stuff. So he's his actually full name invited is Maxwell. He, is he a Maxwell or just a Max? I, I think he's a Maximilian. Oh, that's a yeah. big, that's a, you know, that's, I feel like you got a name like that. That's like a lot to live by. Like, yeah, but he was the one who was trying to drag me to Burning Man originally. Right. And I was like, I'm not interested in your hippie festival. Mm. I'm like, I don't want to go to a bunch of hippies in the desert. That sounds awful. And I was, he's like, no, I swear. I promise you. I promise you. It's great. And finally I buckled and I was like, all right, fine. I'll go. And, and what and year I is went, this? this? Oh, God. That was probably like 2000. Holy Cause, cow. Because I went for like five years in a row. And I think the last year I went was like 2005 or six or something. It's been forever. It's probably way cooler back then, though, I'm guessing. Well, that's the other I mean, thing it's about. Hard. I mean, I never went to what the fuck. Well, that's the thing going. about Burning Man that's so kind of <laughs> annoying. One of the things that I find really annoying about it is the, there's a culture to like constantly complain that it was better back in the day. Like no matter when you go, if you when started going, nineteen eighty six. Nineteen eighty six. Yeah. So the story of Burning wow. Man is that uh, this guy uh, went to Baker Beach in San Francisco because he had been broken up with, and he was all depressed. So he built a like life size effigy of himself, I guess, and went to the beach to burn that as some sort of weird art healing process, right? And when he did this, he attracted like a crowd of people on the beach, and they were all like, "This is awesome." Are you gonna do this next year? And he was like, I guess. I hadn't planned on it, but if you guys are gonna come back next year, let's do it again. So they do it again next year, and they did it for the few first couple of years uh, on the beach at Baker Beach, but it gathered such a huge crowd that the city of San Francisco was like, you've gotta go. Like, you can't be doing this here on the beach. So they researched their options, and they ended up going to Nevada, where the, it still happens, in the Salt Flats. Right. And uh, it was free to attend. You I know. wonder. I wonder if the Wicker Man had any inspiration. Oh, totally, dude! It's totally Wicker Man. Like, it's totally pagan festival Wicker Man inspired. Yeah, but yeah. The funniest story, which I've heard told a few times, and like, I don't know if this is like an urban legend at this point, but I love it. Is that um, Dr. Dre is responsible for Burning Man uh, continuing and for being like a commercial enterprise? The story goes that Dr. Dre was in the desert filming uh, California Lovin' with Tupac, and you know them. You remember I, know, that? I, I know who Tupac is. You don't remember California Love. <laughs> oh, the, the oomph, video. Oomph. Yeah, with the oh, Thunderdome. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, so there's this big Thunderdome out in the desert, and they were filming that, and then they ran across the Burning Man Festival. Uh, and, and then he was talking to him, and he was like, what are you hippies doing out here, you know? And they were like, oh, we're doing this thing. It's a festival, and it's like free to attend, but, you know, we can't pay the land permits. And he goes, would you charge tickets? And they're like, nah. It's free. And he goes, okay, well, I'll pay your, I'll cover your land permits if you charge tickets and cut me in. So apparently the urban legend goes that Dr. Dre is a silent partner in Burning Man and helped to establish a Black Rock City, you know, company that deals with Burning Man. I could believe it. I could believe and it. And then it became a huge party promoter. And whether or not that's true, what is true is that the, the organization behind Burning Man gives out more money directly to artists than like the entire national endowment I think of the they arts should give a lot of money to burn and victims. others 
<laughs> well, they don't give money to burn victims, but they definitely generated quite a few burn victims. It's just like open burn <laughs> pits the everywhere. Opposite. They got to start thinking about this shit. Yeah, I read one year when dude just like, you know, zonked on this, that, the other thing. Just ran right into the flames, man. Ran right into it. Yes, that did happen. Embraced the flames. He was, I think he made love to the flame and he died, died making love to the flame. That's it's pretty fucking epic. There's also the yeah. uh, infamous, <clears throat> there's a few famous deaths at Burning Man. It doesn't happen that often, but. Famous? Yeah, yeah, well, not famous people, but like, you know, there was a guy who hung himself and then nobody, Jeez. nobody caught it because they thought it was like an art installation or like a sculpture or something for like a day and a half. So he's just hanging there and then eventually people realize, no, that's actually a dude. Um, there's also a guy who fell <laughs> off a giant laughing, dome. But, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, it's kind of like a, com a comedic thing that I think people have done after the fact or before the fact even made a joke about that. And then it actually happened. It's hard not to. I mean, that they thought it was an art installation. And right. Then fucking, and then there's a woman who got oh, um, run over by the ship. There's this giant ship like there's these art cars that run around and then there's one like school bus that's made to look like a <laughs> spanish galleon and that just like ran this lady over and then it was banned from the Excuse festival me. for a while <clears throat> actually sorry another tangent that um that ship the people who built the ship i believe were related to something called the extra action marching band which was one of the coolest shows in new york i've ever seen which was like an underground show in the subway system in an abandoned part of the tunnel and you okay. had to like meet a guy with like a white carnation who would like take you down there <laughs> and it's all just candle lit like a huge candle lit squat when the fuck did this happen oh, that was like <laughs> way long ago like the early 2000s holy shit the yeah. things that i missed out on i mean come on people you can't tell me you wish you <laughs> didn't like you wanted to go yeah but holy cow that reminds me remember that you ever see that movie dark days dark days oh god I'm it's like i forgot what year it. it came out but it's it's a black and white movie about uh the community that lives oh yes underneath yes. the subway yes the mole people yes mm -hmm. pretty wild yeah that was an amazing a, movie that if was you've amazing not movie. seen black days dark days dark days yeah you must see it definitely definitely it check that awesome. out but uh yeah damn burning man yeah i don't know maybe yeah we'll see <laughs> Join our Patreon and make us enough money so that we could go there and document it. Yeah. What you is know? what is cool now? You know, like what's the cool thing now? Because I feel like, like I, I I feel like there's a distinct fracturing of culture where like things are, you can't find. There's like no event that I can think of that's the cool thing to go to besides Burning Man, which has already been like it's, it's, deemed a not cool by the young kids. It's anything with Taylor Swift. I love Taylor Swift. I never heard a song. Oh, yeah. You've never, never heard a single song. I mean, I may have, but... Yes, you have. I, I wouldn't... I couldn't be like, oh, this is Taylor Swift. I listened to... Uh, he's a huge Swifty. He's lying. He's, no, making, he's making this up. I, I listen, to, listen to, like, Swing Out Sister and, like... Nice. Are there any good shows coming up? Um, Like music or art? Actually, believe it or not, I am very close friends with a very talented lady named uh, Karen. And... Um, she has a band called Ridiculous Bitch uh, with her husband, and they're actually pretty badass rock and roll band, and they're playing TVI uh, March 24th, which is a Sunday. And if you've never heard of TVI, I actually just saw um, Omni play there. It's a very cool venue in Ridgewood. Oh, yeah. How um, was the Omni show? It was very cool. They were yeah. great, man. They're, they're, they're a tight band. They're, they're pretty awesome. I can't remember if I missed a Toke <laughs> Beaver or if they've already come and gone, or if I can still see them at Knockdown, I, I show you a Toke Beaver, the uh, you like did. the Japanese hardcore girls, and and <clears throat> I think that's coming up in Knockdown Center. Yeah, is an amazing space. If you've never been there, it's just absolutely gigantic. Um, that's in Maspeth, I believe. Yeah. Yes, very cool venue. If you've never been there, and it's, it's huge, a, a band that you love is playing there. I would take the opportunity to go and see that show. Totally. Yes. How's the um, collage? The planning for the collage show coming. It's going very good. Yeah, it's gonna be the biggest show in the world <laughs> here at Solas. National Collage Day. That's right. It's gonna be groovy. Um, that's gonna happen. I mean, I well, I think we're still messing with some dates, but what is the? We moved some no, things around. We're having it on, but the reception will be on International Collage Day. That's right. The eleventh of May. And you must come to this show. It's the, yeah. the most important. If you're a collage artist and you don't go to this show, people will be wondering why you didn't go to this show and you're going to be shunned for the rest of your life. Anybody who's anyone is going to be there. 
That's right. Most likely Jackie Chan, Freddie Prince Jr., <laughs> Bilbo Baggins, Os Oscar the Grouch. The most important people. <laughs> most I feel like that's what your head looks like. It's just a menagerie of um, puppets. Like it looks like a. I think it looks like the large, the Sergeant uh, Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band cover, but it's oh, just it all puzzles. It's just all puppets. It's like uh, I don't know. This is an obscure. And show Harvey because... Weinstein shoved in there. Or whatever yeah, his no, name. he's he's like, hey, <laughs> no, you well, that's it. There's a lot of Harveys. He's that's a different guy. Harvey. Yeah, I mean, he may walk through my mind at some point. Actually, Harvey Weinstein's the one who went to prison for but, uh, yeah. molesting <laughs> women. Not, that's not what we meant. That's not I, what mean, I meant. I mean, he may have been. One. He may have been there at a party within my head at some point. I can't lie. But anyway. Is besides that, um, do you remember a show called Herman's Head? No. It was only on for a couple of seasons. It was this guy, and he wasn't in too many things. Basically, the show is that he works in this office. Actually, his manager is Hank Azaria, and the voice of Lisa Simpson is the accountant. And uh, the show is that he has like six characters that represent him in his own head that when he comes to a situation that needs to be worked out that he needs to figure out, they all like, you know, work on situations within his head to how to react to those situations. It's called Herman's Head. Interesting. But, um, I think it was early 90s, but another obscure cartoon. No, it wasn't no. a cartoon. It, Live you know, action. It made me think about, um, do you remember that cartoon, The Head? Oh, on MTV. Yeah, that yeah, huge, that was crazy. That was a weird show. The alien lived in his head, and then it actually hatched and like shit. Like the big, the big alien, he had the yeah. giant head. This is during the time of uh, liquid television, and this yeah. is also going back. Some very, I mean, that's where Beavis and Butthead started. The first uh, episode or anything ever seen on TV with Beavis and Butthead is when they're playing frog baseball. That's right. And it's like very crudely. I mean, it was always Mike Judge. All that was always crudely drawn, but this is even way more crudely drawn. Um, and they're just like in the backyard, like using frogs as baseballs. But if you've never heard of li uh, liquid television from MTV, um, Eon Flux, that's where it originated from liquid, uh, television. Yeah. They so were on there originally too. Check it out. It's awesome. It was cool stuff. It was Very cool stuff. Cool. What's the equivalent today? Do we have anything like I would like say it? adult swim smalls, but they, yeah. <clears throat> I feel like they can put out there's a lot of talented people that are creating shorts i see stuff on instagram all the time stuff that blows my mind yeah that has very little following and i'm like how is no one following this this is insane and these some of these people have been doing it like they're just waiting you like know? us they're just yeah <laughs> pretty much but we're um, on there even sometimes if you do get featured in smalls and stuff like that or in magazines and stuff like that you got to keep on going you can never stop you got to keep yep. the traction up you got to keep a buzz you got to maybe even lie fake cheat steal kill <laughs> no no don't listen to me okay okay don't listen disclaimer to me. warning don't listen to yeah, more again no 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 be honest to do everything the right way <laughs> are you winking over there no i don't have my fingers aren't tied behind my back. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, Satan hasn't pre presented himself to us yet to write on to any contract. So True. we're still looking to sell our souls. Yeah, the so guy like, just subscribe, hasn't and share so the yeah. demon lords in Hollywood can discover us. Well, or we can keep them away. Either we want them to discover us or it's up to you to, to make us go viral. So <laughs> either we sell our souls to, you know, the, the devil, which is probably like the coolest thing you can do, or like do it the legit way and love us and tell your parents about us and spread the word like Johnny Appleseed. This is Johnny Appleseed Day. What a segue. Boom. I crushed that. <laughs> You're like, I finally I'm got a pro. One. Um, yeah, no, today's uh, National Johnny Appleseed Day. He's tossing a seed to and fro, walking through the forest. He's like, I'm going to go. Pfft, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what I heard about Johnny Appleseed, but I think there's like some, the, the history of the tale is interesting. And he was a real dude. He yeah, really he sort of did that, but not quite the way we imagine. He wasn't like walking around with a pan on his head and like, you know, throwing apple seeds out into the ground. I think he was like, doing more actual horticulture well people like trees <laughs> listen i think it has you know that's the nice version you know what it's about right what johnny appleseed come on man going from what? town to town a womanizer oh do you think the seeds thing. are metaphorical johnny had like fifty thousand kids man. like genghis khan yeah he was a he's the genghis animal. khan he of couldn't america stop himself he are was like the first up? recognized sex addict johnny appleseed <laughs> i think you're just yeah he like you know the whole thing got tied in because he he 
He started by growing apple trees to entice the ladies. Morgan's twisting American no, no, history. No, 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 no. I'm not Mor twisting Morgan's anything. Twisted they twisted Ameri it. This is the it. truth. <laughs> so Johnny was like this down and out, and he didn't know what to do. He did a few different types of seed things. It didn't work out. And then one day he's like, listen, I'm going to... I'm gonna get some apple seeds. I like apples. They're healthy. He starts planting some, and they just happen to turn out beautiful, like these huge apples. Apples that you've never seen before. They were like almost the size of watermelons. So next thing you know, the town's like, oh, you hear about Johnny? And they're like, no. We're like, you gotta look at his apples, man. You gotta go over to his property and, and take a look at his trees. Well, like he and had so the word got out. And, and, and men and women alike visited the, these trees. And at this time, you know, the ladies got together. They left the husbands. The hub, husbands are like, man, I wish I grew trees like these. And the ladies are like, this Johnny. This Johnny. Who is this Johnny Appleseed? So next thing you know, he's causing all these problems. The women are flocking over the Johnnies. They don't need to know why his apples are so huge. <laughs> and next thing you know, he's like, you know what? This is art. I'm taking this shit on the road. I'm going to be planting apple trees. The women are going to be chasing me. My, my apples are so big and supple that they're, they're not going to be able to resist. One thing leads to another, and Johnny's running around the states slinging his seeds. <laughs> 100% fact checked. Yeah. More, Morgan's revisionist American history will be a new segment on here. Cut the revisionist out. Yo, what are this we thinking is the about? Truth. They revised the truth. This is the truth. Yeah. I study. I research. I look at. I surf the web. I go to dot coms and dot edus and orgs and nets. No. Yeah, I go to them all. <laughs> oh man, stick to Google Scholar, right? My my. We should take a vote from my people. mouse is a surfboard. It's like shaped like a surfboard. I'm always like. Cruising the waves, I got like sounds of like whales screaming at me from, this is when I go on the web. I'm in the zone, but yeah, I get in my own world. You live in your own world, my guy. And yes. I, I wanna be a part of it. <laughs> and you can be a part of it too by joining our Patreon. That's right. <laughs> All right. What should, we, what should we do next week? I wanna, I wanna debut a segment well, maybe, we, maybe we can have the people vote on it too because I, I want to do either yeah that'd that, be cool i kind of want to do that segment where <laughs> we go to uh review some ridiculous comments on instagram where people are like arguing about art i always find those really I funny i got big trouble once why because when ai first started, well the, the images and everything like uh -huh. those were really hot right um i made a bunch of um we can get into his at, at another time, but I made uh, Kanye West kissing um, Elon Musk. Yeah. And it stirred a lot of controversy. Did it? We could talk about it another time, but it, sure. it, 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 was, it was not taken lightly. A lot of enemies became friends. A lot of friends became enemies. Yeah. Yeah, it's good times. <laughs> but anyways, Internet yeah. drama. Well, maybe we'll do a little bit of that tomorrow. I'm going to dig we around will. for some really funny ones for Wednesday. Yeah, subscribe. If you like the show, subscribe. Yeah. Like the videos. Thanks for listening, and happy Monday, everybody. Tell your parents about us. Tell everybody. <laughs> well, when you use the Ouija board, the spirits that you talk to, be like, lucky right. time explodes. Oh, oh, no, 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 listen no, no, to no, no, this. No, no. Wasting time on the internet. We need a magic ball. Okay, we'll get a magic ball for next time then. Nice. All right, sounds good. Last thing I uh, was coming up is Gia this Thursday. Come out and see Gia's show. She is a traveling mystic who mm. does interesting digital manipulations. Mystic she is. Check oh. out, <laughs> check out solus.studio slash gallery, and I'll see y'all next time. Thank you for listening to Lucky Time Explosion. Watch the video edition on Patreon. A green screen extravaganza experience available exclusively to official Lucky Timers. This episode was recorded at Sola Studios in Manhattan, New York, helping artists make cool shit since 2016.